Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you to do this blood effect. What happens is any time a blood particle touches a collision shape, it paints to it. And the good thing about this is it's only one node, so it looks like there's plenty of blood, but it's actually showing just one node. So let's get into it. This project will be on my GitHub, link in the description down below. What I want you to do is start a new project. I'm going to do a static body underneath that, the collision image, and then finally a collision shape 2D. Save that as in your scenes as platform. Now for the main scene, I want to do a no 2D, call it blood scene. I've just put some background in, you don't need to worry about that. And on the platforms, I've just put some platforms in too for the blood to collide with. Next, I want you to make another node, and this is going to be an area 2D. It's going to be blood and collision shape 2D. And if we zoom in closer, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Then I want you to make a, another scene and call this surface. It's just a sprite. You can put a sprite in there if you want to. You don't have to, but I have just so it's easier for me to see. Save that into your scenes. We're going to go to our project, project settings, go to your auto load, find surface, open it, add it, make sure it's singleton and close. Now this will be loaded at all times. Then we're going to go to our Z index, make sure it's on a really high number. 4096 is the highest it can go and this will make sure that the image is always at the front. If you leave it at zero, because it's an auto load, it'll actually be right at the top here, which will be shown behind everything. Now when you press play, make sure that the blood scene is the default image we go to, like this. And as you can see, the surface image is there, just so we know it's in the actual scene. Right click blood scene, we're going to add a script, I'll paste in the code. So we're going to have an export as a pack scene and it's going to be our blood scene. Then in physics process, if we press the mouse button left, which I'll put in now, and we're going to go left and MB right. Mine are already there, so you make sure you put yours in. And if you go down to the bottom, make sure that the, uh, the left click for the left button and a right click for the right button. Now when the left button is clicked, we're going to do a for loop and it's going to do 55 instances. For our blood instance, we'll have blood instance into it so this will now be a scene we can actually attach make sure that the blood instance global position starts at the mouse pointer and then add it into the scene now we're going to go to our surface right click attach the script i'll paste in the code we'll call this class name paint we're going to define a surface image as image and a surface texture as image texture. We'll then do the same for the blood texture and the blood image. We'll do the ready function. So we're going to get the surface image. We're going to create an image. It's 1500 by 1000. We'll make sure that the format is RGBA. And this means that I can use the alpha channel. And we'll fill the surface image with the color 0000, which is transparent. Now we need to convert that image into a texture that we can set onto the surface texture. And to do that, we go surface texture, which is an image texture, create from an image, and we pass in the surface image. Down here, we then make sure that the texture of the sprite is the surface texture. So to clarify, you draw onto an image, but to see it, you need to convert it to a texture and then show it on a sprite. Now the blood image, instead of creating a texture, we're gonna load a texture in, and it's the blood one, which is here. Then we convert that texture into the same format as our surface image, which is RGBAH. And once again, to see the blood texture, we need to convert it from an image. So blood texture, create from an image, blood image. Now we're going to do the function that draws the blood. To draw on an image, we have to lock it first. If you don't lock it, it won't update and this won't work. Surface image blit rec is like stamping an image from another file onto this image. So we're going to get the blood image. We're going to start from the coordinates 00, zero which is here. And we're going to go 23 to 3, which is here. And finally, we use draw position as a location where we want to stamp the Im image. So you can see here, we're passing draw pos as a vector 2. This will be the blood's coordinates. Finally, we're finished drawing the blood, so we unlock the surface again. And now we're going to do physics process function. Surface texture create from image, surface image. This will make sure that our surface texture is being updated constantly. So when blood is trickling down, we're drawing to the image, we need to update the texture and show it to the user. If we press the spacebar or return, we fill the image with transparent, which is just like clearing the screen. Down here, if we're holding down the right mouse button, we will draw the blood at the mouse location. So I can show that now. If I hold down the right mouse button, as you can see, we can draw. We're gonna to go to the blood and we're gonna put in a new script. I'm gonna remove this. 
we're going to go back into our 2D. For the blood to know it's collided with a body, we need to go to the signals. So go to node. We're going to go to body entered, connect it. I'm going to go to body exited, connect that too. We're going to put a function up here called is colliding and it's going to be false by default. If we've exited the collision, we're no longer colliding. If we've just entered, we are now colliding. So to make it true. I'll put in the rest of the vars. V speed and the H speed will be our movement vector. The blood acceleration is random. This way it gives some variety between the blood. We've got wobble, so as it trickles down, it moves left and right a tiny bit. We've got our maximum life when we're colliding. And when count equals maximum life, we kill the blood. Finally, we get the draw surface. I'm going to put in the function physics process. Let me go back to the top. So. If we're not colliding, it means the blood is in the air, it's not touch anything. We don't want it to wobble. We want to lerp the speed, so it's going down by 5. A H speed is slowly being lerped to 0, so it just falls directly down. And we show the blood texture. Else, we are touching the platform because we're colliding. We're going to get the surface. We're going to call draw blood and the position of this blood particle. As you remember, if we go back to draw blood, we pass in the blood particle's position and it draws it. Let's go back. I then increase the count. If the count is greater than the max count, we delete the blood. If our vertical speed is falling faster than three, we reduce it to three. The reason I've done this is it gives an impact of blood. Then over time, we reduce the blood's speed down to 0.1 by blood acceleration, which we know is random. So each blood particle be a little bit different. If H speed is going to the right faster than 0.1 or to the left faster than minus 0.1, we want to lerp it so it's going directly down. And if it does go directly down, it will do a, a little bit of a wobble. We don't want to show the particle because we've already got the blood being painted. Finally, if do wobble is true, we just random the ranges so it kind of wobbles left and right slightly a little bit. But we make sure that we clamp it so it doesn't go too far to the right or left. Finally, we update the particle position to V speed and H speed. If the Y position is greater than 1000, which is right at the bottom of the screen, we just delete it because we're no longer using it. So that's all the code complete, but we're going to go back to the blood scene. And you'll notice that we've got something in the inspector, blood. This is the pack scene. We have to put the blood scene in here. So go to load, find your blood scene. Now if we press play, left click, and as you can see, we've got blood. If we press right and draw, works this way. Now, the one issue is if the blood was traveling really fast, it would be spotty. And that's why I've limited it to three because the pixel is actually three pixels tall. You can press spacebar to clear it. So the good thing about the system is that when a player dies, it leaves blood behind. If you were to restart the scene, the blood would stay there, which is great. However, you don't want the blood to stay there when you start a new level. So when if you notice, if I press spacebar, it fills in transparency over it. So what you would do is when you change your level, you'd make the surface transparent again. Image and image texture are quite powerful. The, you can actually paint lots of blood on. What you could do with this is you could actually save the blood texture as its own image and then load it back in another time. So that concludes the end of the tutorial. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.